Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we will be talking about decision trees. My name is Fahad Saada, PMP, PMI, RMP. I'm the lead consultant from Wave Management Consulting. Very regularly and quite often we find ourselves facing situations during which we have to make decisions and when we are faced with several options and often these options are uh, similar or they are close to each other and uh, they make the situation hard to um, make a decision. It, it, it becomes hard to choose between different alternatives. So when we are at a road split and especially when we are in a uh, management or managerial role and we are the decision maker, whether it be uh, at the workplace or even in our personal life, sometimes we find it hard to make a decision and it becomes confusing and it becomes sometimes scary to make a decision. So what can we do? When we have several options or several alternatives and we would like we normally would like to choose the best option whether it's the most profitable option or the most beneficial option or uh, we may want to choose the option uh, with which there is the least um, consequence or uh, the least negative impact so how can we make sure that the decision that we make the choice that we make is the right choice. We cannot choose randomly because random choices are usually not good choices. They're random. They, they have a big margin of error. So we would like our decisions uh, to be more scientific and based on um, some kind of analysis um, of the situation. And um, based on that analysis, of course, we can choose. Today, we will talk about one technique called decision trees. The decision tree is one of the techniques that is used uh, in analyzing situations and it is frequently used in uh, analyzing risks in projects or um, work related risks in general and of course it helps us um, uh, uh, decide between different alternatives or different options um, and in turn of course it helps us to uh, develop the uh, risk management um, um, strategy or risk management plan. So let's see what the decision tree technique is. The decision technique, decision tree technique is um, based on what is called expected monetary value, EMV. The expected monetary value, we simply calculate the future monetary value. So it's the future monetary value for each option that we have. We calculate it. There's a formula for it. Uh, and this is why it has um, more scientific um, grounds. So we calculate the future monetary value. Uh, this is why it's called expected monetary value because it's in the future. And when we calculate the EMV, the expected monetary value of all the options, we choose the option with the highest EMV, the option with the highest expected monetary value value should be the best option for our situation or scenario. Let's take a look at a simple scenario that um, through which we will explain this technique. 
let's assume that you need to attend a meeting in a different city. So you need to travel from your current city, city A, to city B, for example, to attend an important business meeting. Failing to attend this meeting will cost you $4,000. So you have calculated or you have estimated the loss or the cost to you or to your business if you arrive late for example let's say your flight is delayed and you arrive late and you miss the meeting you may have to reschedule the meeting for the next day or you um, may have to cancel the meeting altogether whatever the situation or the um, outcome of this delay it will cost you four thousand dollars now you have two options let's assume that you have two options the first option is to fly with airline x and the second option is to fly with airlines y now let's assume that airlines x you have to pay 900 dollars for the ticket if you fly with airline x so the cost of the ticket the air phase is $900 and Airlines X will give you a 90% chance of arriving on time. So from their past history, you know that Airlines X have a, um, uh, a delay uh, rate of 10% uh, to their flights. However, flying with Airlines Y will cost you $300 for the airline's ticket, but they have a 70% chance of arriving on time. So their delay rate is, um, is, is um, or the probability of their flights being delayed is more than that of Airlines X, 30%. So, given, given this um, um, information and then, then this um, uh, data, um, how do you choose? How do you fly with Airlines X or do you fly with Airlines Y? If you fly with Airlines Y, you immediately save $600 on the uh, cost of the airfares. And you will probably find that most people will choose flying with airlines. Why? Because it is cheaper. It's obvious that it is cheaper to fly with airlines. Why? However, if we make such a decision just like that, we may be making um, a mistake. We may not be choosing the best option. So let's see how we can apply the technique of the decision tree to this simple scenario to determine which option we should choose. So we have two options according to the scenario, either fly air with Airlines X or fly with Airlines Y. If we fly with Airlines X, it's going to cost us $900. This is the investment amount that we have to pay. If we fly with Airlines Y, it's going to cost us $300. Okay, so now if we fly with Airlines X, we know that we have a 90% chance of arriving on time. So we will not be late for our meeting, which means the cost will be zero because we will arrive on time, we will make it to the meeting on time, it will not cost us anything. However, we estimated that the cost will be $4,000 if we miss the meeting, if we arrive late. And because Airlines Y give me a 10% probability of late arrival, and if their flight does arrive late, it will cost me $4,000. By the same token, we have 
the options for airlines Y, we have a 70% probability of arriving on time with a zero cost, and we have a 30% probability of a late arrival with $4,000 cost. Let's see how we can um, use these numbers to um, uh, pick the right choice. We will be calculating the value of each end node. These nodes are called the end nodes. So the value of each end node will be the value of the node minus the investment amount. So in this case, I subtract 0 minus 900. And the result is minus $900. This is the value of this end node. By the same token, we calculate the value of this end node, so we have to subtract minus 4000, which is the value here, the cost if we arrive late, minus $900 and we get a value of four minus $4,900 for this end node. In the same way, we will calculate the value of each remaining end node. So we have minus 300 for this, and we have minus 4,300 for this. Now, you see those values in bold? These are the values of, or the estimated values of each end node. Should we choose one particular path, this is the value that we will end up, end up with. And of course, notice the negative sign here. It means it's a cost to us. We will be uh, paying this amount, or we expect that the uh, whatever path we follow will cost us this much. Again, what do these mean? Now we go to the we get to the formula. I said at the beginning of this video that this is a scientific approach. So we will be applying a formula. It's called the expected monetary value formula. And the formula goes like that. EMV1 is the expected monetary value of option number one, which is flying with airlines X. I will be multiplying the probability of each path. I will multiply it by the end value of that node for that path. So we have 10% or 0.1 multiplied by minus $4,900. To that, I will add 90% multiplied by 900, minus 900, of course. Let's not forget the sign. So I will calculate the value of each path. And this path has a probability of 10% generating a loss of a certain amount so I multiply this amount, which is the end value of the node, by the probability which generates it. And I do the same for this path. I multiply the expected amount, the end value of the node, that is, I multiply it by the probability that generates it. And then I add up those values. I get a total of minus $1,300. So the minus $1,300 is the EMV of option X. I call it EMV1. Let's do the same and calculate the EMV for option Y. So I have 0.7 multiplied by minus 300, add to it 0.3 multiplied by 4,300, I get a total amount of minus $1,500. This is the EMV 
for option Y, the expected monetary value for option Y. Now, I said at the beginning of this video that I should choose or I favor the option with the highest EMV. In this case, and notice the negative sign, I have 1000 minus 1300 for one EMV and the other EMV has a value of minus 1500. The higher value of the two is this one because of the negative sign, of course. This is saying, or as if this is saying that if we choose option X to fly with airlines X, I expect, given the circumstances and the history of the airlines and the estimates of the costs and the estimates of how much it would cost me if I arrive late or if I miss the meeting, I expect a cost of $1,300. Because it's a negative sign, it's a negative amount, this amount is higher than minus 1,500. And based on this, I choose EMV1. I choose the option with EMV1, which is I choose to fly with Airlines X. Of course, this is a simple scenario. We can apply the same concept to more complicated scenarios. Uh, in the end, it is the same approach and the same formula. And of course, we always favor the option with the higher EMV. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I strive to um, um, always deliver what is uh, beneficial and um, um, what is best for you. Um, I hope you um, enjoy all my videos, uh, educational videos and training videos uh, and stay tuned for more to come.